Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I decided I wanted to be able to share a little bit with those of you there here on our YouTube channel of Israeli News Live what we're doing over on Patreon. Some of the information that we are sharing with our listeners over there. And also because the particular information we're sharing in this particular video is not as sensitive uh, as some of the other things that we are sharing that would uh, certainly raise some flags there with the um, censorship program that goes on on this channel. Uh, but uh, as the title suggests uh, here, and of course I haven't actually named it as I'm doing this video here, but uh, the DARPA scientists are working with the body of Nimrod under Colorado. Um, that is what we're going to get into today, uh, as well as some other things that they're doing. I actually had this video up here uh, I thought was kind of interesting as I speak about this. I figured maybe we could kind of let this maybe run here in the background for you. But uh, uh, this was some of the, it's actually the vault there that they have there in Iraq and some of the treasures that were found there in his uh uh, his tomb and so I wanted to kind of let that kind of play for you guys so you could kind of see that uh, as we talk about this but but also too uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up to you is that Nimrod himself is a very interesting person because we know according to Genesis chapter 10 verse 8 uh, it says in Cush begat Nimrod and he began to be a mighty one in the earth, or a gibor. Uh, in gibor, I often think about where we see the prophecy about Jesus when a child is born. Uh, he would be called the Prince of uh, Peace, the mighty God, the El Gibor. Uh, Nimrod thought of himself as if he were God on earth. Uh, it is also spoken about the giborim, which were the giants, the descendants of the Nephilim, the people in the promised land, uh, as reported by the 12 spies that went to spy out the lands, that they were the Gibberim. And Goliath, of course, we know was part of uh, one of the Gibberim or the El Gibor, or not El Gibor, but Gibor. And the Nephilim and the Gibberim are the Egyptian and Greek and Roman gods. They were uh, one of, mix, of a mixed bloodline. Uh, they were part human and they were part fallen angel. And they were uh, basically unredeemable, according to the scripture, as we know that God destroyed uh, everything that, that, that they were before the flood. But they ended up back on the earth once again, even after the flood. Uh, so Nimrod is from that lineage. And there are, um, you know, th th this is where we end up today. So there's a lot of biblical thoughts that I'm going to want to be sharing in a, in a biblical teaching on this here, but I'm not actually ready to be able to share that tonight. But uh, I, I did want, I want to kind of make this a little bit bigger for you as well, so you can see this good on your screen there. Some of the artifacts in here also include the serpents uh, that are going to be on a crown. You're going to see in just a little bit uh, the things that were found inside of his tomb. And although we're, I think you're seeing Iraqi soldiers there, they are wearing American fatigues there. We actually went to war in Iraq for the body of Nimrod, as well as some artifacts that were in his tomb. And I'm not talking about the gold and silver like they allowed the Iraqi people to keep there. We're talking about the, the very elements that give the uh, scientists, the U.S. scientists, as well as some other world scientists there to make CERN become a multidimensional device. I've shared that with you guys before. Well, at any rate there, I was trying to find out some updated information about Nimrod and his body because it had been told to me that not only did we bring the body of Nimrod back here to the United States, we also, oh, wait a minute, there's one right there. Let me just stop there and look at that. Look at that winged uh, creature, and I'm not sure if that is on a crown or whatever, like a, a winged woman there, um, this part of that crown. Some of the things that I've seen in this artwork here, yeah, it is a crown there, uh, and she's wrapped around all the way around there, is that um, it is really, you can see the evidence of 
the Nephilim bloodline seen in a lot of the artifacts that were discovered there in his tomb. Look at there, there you go again, the all-seeing eye, uh, the ring that would have been worn there with the all-seeing eye. Uh, I find that fascinating as well. And, um, you know, and, and that may have been a, there. and now you have the, uh, I think that's considered the Ouroboros, the, but I don't know if that's a serpent or not. That's where uh, the ring comes from, is from the snake wrapped around. Uh, but there are, let me just see here if I can find it here. There's going to be a place in here somewhere. And I may have already passed it. Maybe I'll just kind of move forward a little bit. Um, it might be further back. So let me let me back up there and just see as I'm walk, uh, easing along. Here. There, there it is right there. It's actually right there. There is uh, what appears to be the serpents themselves there. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's a crown or what's that that is on there. Maybe they'll, they'll back out and we'll, we'll see that a little bit better there. Uh, again, showing the the um, the descendant of the Nephilim, or as Jesus said about the Pharisees of his day, that they were of their father, the devil. They were serpents. They were vipers. All right. Now, let me go into though the, the, this issue here, and I want to kind of I'll just back up and kind of leave that right there on where it was. They're showing that serpent head type thing on this crown thing or whatever that is, um, but. I was asking again about Nimrod because I knew that they were working on resurrecting the body of Nimrod. And from what I have been told, against all scientific belief that could be possible, it appears that they may very well have done that. Uh, let me give a little bit of background, though, on some of the things that DARPA has been working on. And this is just information that, uh, that I have... Uh, some some knowledge on and um but it is a bit sketchy that type of knowledge when you're dealing with darpa darpa is a very secretive organization there but uh some of the uh, colleagues that i have there scientists that cross boundaries there you might say with with other scientists so you can kind of pick up on some of the things that are going on but DARPA has been working now for, for quite a few years now, several years at least, on soul transference. Um, we know this goes back all the way even to Bill Clinton, and I don't know if I've actually shared this with you guys before. I think I have. Uh, over here on this, on YouTube, I don't think I've ever shared something like this, but on Patreon, yes, I believe we have talked about that with our friends there. But um, Bill Clinton was dying uh, a little while back, and they made a makeshift hospital on top of a library. I think it was in Chicago. Uh, I may be wrong on the location of that, so please don't hold me to that, but I'm thinking that that's where it was. And he was not expected to live. They had cloned a body of Bill Clinton, and that has been something that's been done on multiple presidents where they clone bodies. And what they did was a soul transference uh, moving his soul out of his body into this body of a clone. I know that sounds like way out there. It's like most people would be like, whoa, that's just, there's no way. I, I just don't believe it. I, I can't say. I, I don't know. I can't, I cannot confirm it myself. I can only tell you the things that I, that I, um, colleagues that, uh, or I shouldn't say colleagues, but friends that I have that, uh, that uh, are, are, are former um, uh, I, well, we won't even go there on that issue there. But anyway, uh, friends that I have that are in the intelligence community that have shared this type of information with me that tell me about that, that that was actually done with Bill Clinton. And not only that, but in the last couple of years, they have been studying uh, deeply about the uh, some sort of energy that is transferred, demonic possession is really what it comes down to, uh, that can be transferred. Uh, this they call, the, the scientists call it energy because they're atheists. They don't believe in God, so therefore they don't believe in demons. Uh, but they do know, they, they, they refer to this more as an energy. But those scientists that are believers in Jesus that know about these things, they call it demonic entities. And they have done 
experiments on human beings because they're able to uh, detect and, and follow this energy as it moves. And they have seen that they can easily move these in, this energy or these spirits into the human body. Uh, and these people then become demonically possessed. So these are some of the things that are going on. And as a result of this, so not, this is what I'm leading up to on this, was it was shared with me a little while back, uh, maybe a month or so ago, that against everything scientifically that one scientist, scientist friend of mine uh, could possibly believe that it was said that the body of Nimrod, they had successfully put his spirit back in, or we would say a spirit, not so much. We can't verify that it's his spirit, but a, a spirit into, into that body that they brought back from Mosul, Iraq. Um, also reminding you, those of you that may not know, it was Hillary Clinton that was heavily involved in the, the bringing back the body of Nimrod. She was uh, very much involved there at the White House when George Bush was president there. Uh, and so, yes, she was in involved in all of those things that were going on there. So, but anyway, this is the reason why we went to war, by the way, in Iraq, uh, was because of the body of Nimrod. And uh, and as I said, the artifacts that ended up making CERN actually become, uh, wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 just a minute. I just did notice something there and I had not noticed this before. Let me back this up here just for a minute. Yes, U.S. Army. So we're looking at artifacts in Iraq and we have U.S. Army soldiers present. I had not noticed that on their uniforms before. Uh, of course, you can see right here an American face there. And maybe somebody you guys might even know. I have no idea. But the U.S. Army there looking at this artifacts here, that only helps confirm the fact, as I had said before, we were there, we went into there, and we took these artifacts out. Now, there were, by the way, the Marines were the ones that actually went into the grave initially. And there were several uh, Marines that actually got possessed of very evil demonic spirits uh, came back to the United States and ended up in some very serious crimes, ended up being put in prison. There were a lot of people killed as a result of that, um, et cetera. I've talked about that as well before. But going back to the situation though about Nimrod's body, uh, they wanted to get that his spirit back into his body. And as I said, supposedly that actually took place. But what was interesting was, is that I've been wondering, where is Nimrod's body being kept at? And from what I was told just recently, and this was very, um, it, it's not 100%. It's trying to glean information from those scientists working with DARPA, which is very difficult. So they didn't say everything but they knew that these one group of scientists had flown to Colorado and they had spoke about that uh, when they got off the plane, immediately they went about 10 stories underground. And when they went underground, what's very interesting in this course, this is not actually what you're seeing here. I just, I'm just going to show you this image here just as a result. But there was some sort of vault um, that they actually had to go in behind to go where allegedly this may be where the body of Nimrod is actually being kept. Uh, as a result, the scientists that were involved in this were very tight-lipped. They did have Marines as their guards and escorts there, uh, so they had some sense of security. But when they went in behind this vaulted door, and again, it's not the vaulted door here you see on this video. It's a totally different vaulted door there under Colorado, deep underground there in a secret base that we have. Um, they said immediately you could feel a difference in the atmosphere on the other side and that there was a very evil groaning going on of demonic voices. And they were scared beyond belief. Uh, now, they were also tight-lipped about this mission. They just simply mentioned that uh, as part of what was going on. Now, I do know that the scientists that I know uh, knew that they were going to 
uh, work on this case about Nimrod's body. So we've not been able to glean for sure exactly what is going on, but it is believed that Nimrod's body is under the airport in that secret military base there in Colorado. Uh, and I'm going to do a biblical teaching on this. I've been trying to find it. My wife had found this once before. Some of the early Christians actually believed that Nimrod would be the Antichrist. Uh, and that may sound a little bit strange, but yet when you look at the scriptural uh, description in the book of Revelation, he is, he is not, but yet he is, and he is uh, one of the seven, but he is the eighth. Um, could that have been referring to Nimrod? Nimrod coming back. Does he have a deadly wound? Sure he does. Uh, and that would be interesting because Satan is a copycat. He copies everything that God does. So Jesus comes as the true son of God, gives his life, dies on a cross, resurrects. Well, Satan wants to have the same thing. He wants to have his man wounded and raised up again. So could it be that this issue with Nimrod could actually really be um, a prophecy in the Bible that could be fulfilled in the coming days? I don't know. We're going to get into that. Uh, and and the other thing, too, I'll just kind of share because it's kind of part of what I'm speaking about here anyway that, that we were, I was in this discussion with recently, and that is that um, there, there was a lot uh, of discussion in regards to what the scientists are, are seeing that we are going to have a major increase of crime as a result of demonic possession, or as they say, this energy that is coming in. I say energy because this is the atheists that are the scientists working on this that do not believe in spirits. They just believe it's an energy that's able to take over the people. Uh, I've also wondered too, though, could there be uh, something more along the lines with the 5G technology and them manipulating the people and controlling them and causing them to commit such crimes? Uh, so I don't discount some of that that ability as well uh, that is coming. But I mean, there's a lot of things that's about to happen. And another thing we're going to be sharing very soon over on Patreon as well is the coming civil unrest in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I've been made aware of that there is coming a major civil unrest in Atlanta, Georgia. Could that be because of the recount that's going on? Uh, the, the situation that Cynthia Abrams and her company is involved in? I'm not really sure, but I know that they're anticipating that. And that's a very serious issue that's going on. Um, we're going to be talking also about the, uh, you know, the debris that's going to be, we're going to be facing here uh, in the fall of the year. I mentioned to you back earlier in the year here that uh, we would see two times where we would deal with uh, meteorites or asteroids. Once again, I told you it would be in uh, March and, I said, when was it? March, April? Or no, no, uh, May, I believe, April, May. And I said, but whatever we see there, you could double that uh, right around September. All this will increase once again. Uh, but we'll get more of those sonic booms because we will be having some of these smaller asteroids entering into our atmosphere and colliding with the Earth. Uh, of course, now what I'm waiting for is when they finally hit populated areas. That's something that... Uh, you know, everything that's been told to me, eventually it will happen. You know, is it going to happen this year? I can't really say. I do know next year, unless uh, they're able to destroy uh, uh, the one asteroid that's coming in that's as big as a large house there, uh, or deflect it, it is supposed to hit off the coast of South Carolina, creating a very, very sizable tsunami that will affect the coast of the United States. Uh, but there's other threats that we're facing and, uh, um, you know, but not nothing, nothing uh, to the size of what we are anticipating uh, next year with that one asteroid. And that's not really that big size of a big house. That's nothing. 
I mean, look at the Bible prophecy. We got some big stuff that's supposed to hit the earth, whether that's allegorical or, or literal uh, in the book of Revelation there. Uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But 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 even biblically, we got all the stones, the weight of 100 pounds, the weight of a talent. I think that's about 100 pounds. If we get the exact, exact weight of a talent. But God is going to rain down fire and brimstone. Uh, is that going to be part of this binary system that we're traveling through? I'm not really sure. But, uh, but I do know we are facing some very, very serious challenges. Even this year, even this year, uh, there is a possibility uh, that we could see some of these uh, uh, asteroids that are going to be coming in uh, it's, it's actually, I will say this, I, I asked about the one that hit Russia a few years back. Would it be more along the lines of that uh, this year in the September time frame? And mainly because of the sonic boom when it comes in. And we did see some of the sonic booms back in uh, either April or May. I forget which month it was. There was one, I think, over uh, Syracuse, New York. Uh, for here in the United States that created a sonic boom. But still, they're very small, those there. But um, this time around in September, they're to be a little larger. And uh, we're supposed to get a little bit a little bit more noisy there. Uh, so, you know, let's just keep everything uh, before the Lord. Keep your lives prayed up, ready to go. And, and I can tell you something, friends. The only safe place is in Jesus Christ. Um uh, you know, if, if I find out that we've got something that would really be affecting uh, people in a certain place, I will certainly share with you uh, that type of information. I have shared some things over on Patreon already about that. Um, but it's some things you kind of have to read between the lines uh, because there's just so much I can say on certain issues so uh, if you happen to check things out over on Patreon, uh, uh, you, you know, it might, might be worth your while there. Anyway, thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.